time, in the land of cardboard tales, there was a beautiful young princess called Princess Bottle. Not long ago, she had been picking flowers to take to her palace, when she'd been captured by a dangerous dragon and imprisoned in the Tower of Terror. Oh, where is everybody? Princess Bottle complained. It's a bit lonely up here. Now, beside the Tower of Terror was an enchanted forest, a forest where trees could dance and branches could twist and stretch as if by magic. And in the middle of the forest lived a mug-shaped wizard called Hamish. Princess Bottle, he shouted, what are you doing up there? Oh, it's that stupid dragon, Princess Bottle replied. He locked me up here. Could you rescue me? Nay, what you need is a true hero. I'll cast my magic spell. Ahem. Hocus pocus, choppity chop. There's a damsel in distress. A knight in shining armour we need to sort out all this mess. And quick as a flash, Wizard Hamish disappeared. On the other side of the paper hills stood a huge grey fortress. It was the home of Sir Toffington of Card. Sir Toffington was the bravest and strongest knight in all the land, and he was always embarking on the most heroic of quests. Here he is, with his magical friend Terry, the cardboard mirror. Oh, Terence, Terence, on the wall! Uh, what shall we do today? We must engage rescue mode, Terry answered. There is a damsel in distress in the Tower of Terror. Good Lord! A damsel in distress? Sir Toffington exclaimed. Well, what are we standing here for? Let's proceed post-haste. Sir Toffington mounted his faithful cardboard horse and embarked on his daring mission. Sir Toffington! Sir Toffington! There's a damsel in distress! Uh, oh, where is he? Sir Toffington has just left, Terry told him. To help the princess. All right, said Wizard Hamish eagerly. Ahem. Hocus pocus, higgledy piggledy. Uh, no, hang on, it's uh, abracadabra. Um, uh, uh, oh, stuff it, Sir Toffington! Back at the tower, Princess Bottle was looking very frightened. The deadly dragon had returned, and he was plodding backwards and forwards menacingly. Look, could you please let me down? The princess asked. It's awfully drafty up here. But the dragon just breathed hot paper fire in her face. Thanks, that's much warmer. Luckily, Sir Toffington of Card was galloping to her aid. <sighs> Sir Toffington! Sir Toffington! We must destroy the dragon and set the princess free! Wizard Hamish! said Sir Toffington pleased to see his old friend. You're right, but have no fear. The trees will help us. And sure enough, as the heroes rode into the enchanted forest, the trees worked their cardboard magic, helping to keep Sir Toffington and Wizard Hamish from the dragon's glare. Oh yes, the dragon will never see us now, said Hamish, as they approached the Tower of Terror. Hold on, I'll attack him with a great wind. A great wind? Shazam! Oh! Oh, Hamish, you dunderhead! You've blown our cover! And the dragon had spotted them. Blah! Run, Elsie! <laughs> Run for your life! Now then, you reprobate! Roar! Growled the dragon as he breathed paper flames at Sir Toffington. Ah, uh, Wizard Hamish, I ah, uh, may require some uh, assistance. Uh. Oh no, what can I do? Sir Toffington's done for, and soon I'll be too. But a plan I have, I'd better act fast. I'll ask the trees to come to my aid and chase the wretched dragon away. Uh, what? Trees, attack! And sure enough, all the trees from the enchanted forest came to Wizard Hamish's aid and charged at the fire-breathing dragon. Roar! The dragon roared. He made a hasty retreat, chased away by the army of magical trees. Have no fear, Princess Bottle, Sir Toffington reassured her. We'll get to the root of the problem. And before he had finished speaking, 
a line of magical trees arrived at the foot of the tower. Bayek! It's a staircase! the princess exclaimed. With the enchanted trees perfectly arranged, Sir Toffington was able to climb over their branches and reach the poor damsel in the tower above. Your bottleness, he said. The grateful princess jumped out of the tower and made her way to the bottom of the woodland staircase. And they all lived happily ever after. Or they would have done had Bottle not been dreaming. <laughs>